In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Good morning to everyone. You are most welcome for this wonderful Mass. As you know, the history of Our Lady of Fatima, 100 years ago, Our Lady first appeared to three children shepherding their sheep in Fatima. You know, or oh, the uh, three names, Jacinda, Francisco, and Lucia. So for them, Our Lady appeared and insisted the urgent need of repentance, conversion, and prayer. My dear people in the church, today we begin the Lenten season. So we celebrate this Ash Wednesday. Today we begin the Lent with Ash Wednesday. Lent insists on prayer, fasting, and giving alms. Since the early centuries, these are three practices the church has encouraged to undertake during Lent as a form of penance, praying more, fasting, and giving alms to the poor. I hope Lent may also be for you a time of growing closer to the Lord by spending more time in prayer. That's what Our Lady insisted to three of the children this would be also a good time to renew praying the rosary daily if you have been neglectful. Reading the Bible and reading spiritual books are also a great help. So I wish you to have a, a very good uh, Lenten season and coming together as God's family. In blow God's blessing and forgiveness. This Mass is very specially offered for all of our intentions and for all of our families. I confess to, to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary of Virgin, all the angels and saints, unto you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord of God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant to our Lord that we may begin with holy fasting this campaign of Christian service, so that as we take a battle against spiritual evils, we may be armed with weapons of self-restraint. Through the Lord Jesus Christ, to our sin, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated and listen to the liturgy of the world.
First reading, a reading from the prophet Joel. Now, now it is the Lord who speaks, come back to me with all your heart, fasting, weeping, mourning. Let your hearts be broken, not your garments torn. Turn to the Lord your God again, for he is all tenderness and compassion, slow to anger, rich in graciousness, and ready to relent. Who knows if he will not turn again, will not relent, will not leave a blessing as he passes. Oblation and libation for the Lord your God. Sound the trumpet in Zion, order a fast, proclaim a solemn assembly, call the people together, summon the community, assemble the elders, gather the children, even the infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his bedroom and the bride her eclaw. Between vestibule and altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, lament. Let them say, spare your people, Lord. Do not make your heritage a thing of shame, a byword for the nations. Why should it be said among the nations, where is their God? Then the Lord, jealous on behalf of his land, took pity on his people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on me, God, in your kindness, in your compassion, blot out my offense. O oh, wash me more and more from my guilt and cleanse me from my sin. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned. My offenses truly, I know them. My sin is always before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned. What is evil in your sight I have done? Have mercy on us, for we have sinned. A pure heart create for me, O Lord. Put a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, nor deprive me of your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned. Give me again a joy of your help. With a spirit of fervor sustain me. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. How mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. We are ambassadors for Christ. It is as though God were appealing through us. And the appeal that we make in Christ's name is be reconciled to God. For our sake God made the sinless one to sin, that in him we might become the goodness of God. At the favorable time I have listened to you. On the day of salvation I came to your help. Well, now is the favorable time. This is the day of salvation. The sword of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks for the Lord. Gospel acclamation. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. A pure heart create for me, God, and give me again the joy of your help. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Chapter 6, verses 1 to 6, on 16 to 18. Jesus said to his disciples, Be careful not to parade your good deeds before men to attract their notice. By doing this, you will lose all reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give alms, do not have it 
trumpeted before you. This is what the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets to win men's admiration. I tell you solemnly, they have heard their reward. But when you give alms, your left hand must not know what your right hand is doing. Your almsgiving must be secret, and your father, who sees all that is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not imitate the hypocrites. They love to say their prayers standing up in the synagogues and at the street corners for people to see them. I tell you solemnly, they have heard your reward. But when you pray, go to your private room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father, who is in that secret place, and your Father who sees all that is done in secret will reward you. When you fast, do not put on a gloomy look as the hypocrites do. They pull long faces to let men know they are fasting. I tell you solemnly, they have heard the reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that no one, no one will know you are fasting except your father who sees all that is done in secret. And your father who sees all that is done in secret will reward you. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. My dear brethren in Christ Jesus, today as I said in the introduction, today we end and learn the great penitential season of the church year in preparing for the celebration of the dead and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ for the salvation of each one of us. The readings today speak about repentance, about fasting, and about preparation to welcome our Lord Jesus, uh, the, res uh, the resurrected Jesus. We are called to prepare for the glory of re the resurrection and our salvation by prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Throughout land, many people give up various things such as meat, chocolate, or sugar, etc. We do as well do. But what we are asked to give up in the readings has far greater impact, not just for ourselves, but for others. For we are asked to give up sin or hypocrisy. My dear brethren, our first reading comes from the book of Joel. Just we we'll listen to the first reading. One of the 12 minor prophets and is a book of hope, so to say. In today's passage, Joel leads the characteristics of God, how God is. Our God has got tenderness and he is compassionate. He is so lovable, slow to anger, rich in graciousness and ready to relent. The people are told that if they turn back from their sins, then the Lord who cannot be forced to do anything might turn back from the punishment they deserve. Yes, that's true, my dear brethren. This turning back and repentance is to be done by everyone, rich and poor alike. The psalm asks the Lord to be merciful. When we come to the second reading, St. Paul reminds the Corinthians that they are ambassadors for God and therefore they must be reconciled to him because they cannot be his ambassadors if they live lives contrary to the law of God. There is also a reminder that it is always the favorable time for the Lord always listen to his people when they return to him. When we come to the gospel, my dear brothers and sisters, we are told that what we do is to be done 
quietly. Whatever you do, the prayer, the almsgiving, the fasting, do not to do like hypocrites. When you do the, like that, so you are also becoming like a hypocrite. So whatever you do, do it in privately. That's what uh, the invitation given to us today, particularly during this London season, my dear brothers and sisters. In the gospel, we are told that we, what we do is to be done quietly, humbly, and without drawing attention to ourselves for public displays of false piety do not win God's favor. The great London acts of almsgiving, prayer, and fasting are addressed by the Lord, and it is clear that all three are required. So my dear brethren, as we have started this London season, let us reflect upon our Catholic life, how far we are doing such kind of virtues, practices in our day-to-day -day life. Being prayerful, so we are ready to give almsgiving, and we are ready to do what sort of fasting uh, the, church, uh, the church is advancing, the church is urging us to do. Let us reflect upon, and after the homily, we are going to bless the ash, and the ash will be uh, applied on our forehead. And let us think that we came uh, from the earth, and we will turn it dust, and you will unto you will return to the dust. Yes, my dear friends, let us reflect upon our lives, and may we wish you to have a fruitful Lent and meaningful Lent coming years. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly ask God our Father that he be pleased to bless with the abundance of his grace these ashes which we will put on our head, heads in penitence. O God, who are moved by acts of humility and respond with forgiveness to works of penance, Lend your merciful ear to our prayers, and in your kindness, pour out the grace of your blessings on your servants who are marked with these ashes. That as they follow the Lenten observances, they may be worth, worthy to come with minds made pure to celebrate the Paschal mystery of your Son through Christ our Lord. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Repent and believe in the gospel.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It shall become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands. It shall become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and haunted God, may we accept to be Lord, sacrifice this day, may pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash me from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and us may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we solemnly offer the annual sacrifice for the beginning of Lent, we entreat you, O Lord, that through works of penance and charity, we may turn away from harmful pleasures and cleansed from our sins, may become worthy to celebrate devoutly the passion of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, you are fruitful, await the sacred Paschal feast with the joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer, and on the works of charity and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and ended willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which shall be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once again giving thanks, he gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, <coughs> save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you, you have set, set us free. free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with our Pope, 
Francis, and our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Saint Joseph, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope on the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ for, for the kingdom. kingdom. The power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to choose my Lord. But only say the word, my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
So my dear brothers and sisters, really, truly, indeed we are privileged to have this wonderful Mass at the Chapel of Apparition. So we could see multicultural people here, so people from various parts of the world. So we people are from India, but uh, we are settled uh, in England. So Father Sojan John is with us, so he is from Italy, he is also originally from India. And we are all very happy, so we are all here as a pilgrims, we are all very happy to see different faces from various parts of the world. So we wish you all to have a fruitful and meaningful Lenten season. Our Lady of Fatima will continue to intercede for all of our prayers and petitions. Uh, may you all have a, a very good day and very good uh, pilgrimage. Uh, Wish you all to have a wonderful day today. Thank you very much for attending this uh, wonderful Mass at the Chapel of Apparition. And thanks to um, Santro, oh, I don't know his name, for setting up for this altar and everything and helping out to celebrate this uh, fruitful Mass. Thank you very much. And let's all stand up for the final prayer and a blessing. Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received sustain us, O Lord, that our Lenten fast may be pleasing to you and be for us a healing remedy. We ask this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks. So, wish you all to have a very good day. Thank you very much.